One thing you want to watch out for is you can't divide by zero. You don't want the denominator to be equal to zero because that's undefined. So what you can do when you have a fraction like this is you can take a look at the denominator, set it equal to zero, solve, and you see x equals one half. Now, we don't want x to be one half because then you'd be dividing by zero. So you could say that the domain okay, is all real numbers, but x can't equal one half. That's one way to write it. Or you can think of the number line, you could say here's a half, okay, it's everything except for a half. So what we can do if we use the interval notation is negative infinity to positive one half, curve bracket, doesn't include one half, union one half to positive infinity, okay, so the curve bracket doesn't include that point, okay, the parentheses. So two different ways to write this, but again, the main thing to watch out for is you can't divide by zero. Now another scenario that comes up, okay, is when you have a square root. Okay, so if you have a square root, we know that you can't take the square root of a negative number without getting imaginary numbers. So if you take a look at, let's say this function here, y equals, let's just say it's five x minus three, we don't want what's underneath this radical to be negative. So the way we can find the domain in this problem is we can take what's underneath the radical and just make it into an inequality. This has to be greater than or equal to zero. Greater than meaning positive or equal to zero. Square root of zero is just zero. We don't want it to be less than zero, that would be negative. We can't take the square root of a negative without getting imaginary numbers. So if we're looking at the domain here, we can solve this and say, okay, five x is greater than or equal to three, okay? Divide by five, so x has to be greater than or equal to three fifths. Okay, so that's one way to write it. So it's all real numbers that are greater than or equal to three fifths. Or if you want to use the interval notation, three fifths to infinity. Sometimes I like to draw this on the number line just to visualize it. So three fifths, including three fifths to infinity. So we think about going from low to high or left to right, and we can write our interval that way. So two things to pay attention uh, for when you're looking at the domain. Don't, you can't divide by zero, and you don't want to take the square root of a negative number. So you just make an inequality and set whatever's underneath the radical greater than or equal to zero. This is for even roots, so square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, like that. You can take the odd root of a negative number, like the cube root of negative 27. That's okay, that's just gonna be negative three. But we can't take the even root of a negative, so that's how we would approach that one. Now, just another note about domain. Say you're given, instead of the equation, you're given the graph, okay? So you're given the graph. Sometimes students struggle a little bit with finding the domain. So say, for example, you know, this is your graph, and let's just say that it looks like this. One, two, okay, right there. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So what you can think about is you can think about domain is what the x values can be and the range are what the y values can be. What I do is, just like I just did there, is you take a vertical line, usually like your marker, your pencil, like this, you scan from left to right, okay, from negative to positive, and you can see there's no points on the graph here at zero, at one, not until we get to two and beyond are there you know, points on the graph, right? So that means that the domain has to be x is greater than or equal to two. So you could say x is greater than or equal to two, or if you are using the interval notation, from two to infinity. Now the range, this is going down towards negative infinity, up towards positive infinity. The range would be all real numbers, but in this lesson we were just talking about the domain. So we're thinking about going from left to right like that. Okay, so this has just been a little overview about how to find the domain, whether you're given an equation or you're given a graph. So review it again if you need to, and I'll see you in the next video.